Hey golfers, Tony with Reactionary Golf. What a great Masters tournament. Truly, uh, Mr. Patrick Reed just played very, very well. Would have been interesting to see if Jordan could have birdied 18, but didn't happen, and that's golf. So let's take a look at maybe some of the changes. I believe that Patrick's improved, and that's allowed him to become such a good ball striker. My understanding is a little bit more of a draw-biased player. And this is a picture on the left here back in uh, back in the European tour and what I want you to watch out for is just kind of watch his footwork right here so you know really club face is open at the top and there's nothing really wrong with that that does force a lot of club face rotation through impacts you're gonna need to get it squared up and so when we take a look at this downswing everything's now planted and his arms are right there and make a note of that. We're just going to put the hands kind of at that point. Because what I want to bring up is what I see is a totally different arm swing and different lower body movement. And we're going to see the result of that in the feet. And so right now you can see heel still comes up. You can see that. The heel is still up. It's being planted now. So it's firmly on the ground right now. Now again, this is just to me where it's really solid. So... In this swing, as I go back, he's now planted. His arms are much slower in the downswing. So when we take a look at his, where his arms are. Now, again, we have camera angle and everything else. So different speeds and everything else. But that's one thing I see. I see his arm swing being much better and more in front of him and not so much behind him on the way down. Now, what I also see is because there's more lower body effort and movement, we're going to see a lot of different foot, I guess, movement would be the way I describe it. Take a look at how this left foot starts here, and then watch how much that gets rotated. Now, some of that could be range of motion issues, uh, lack of flexibility in the left hip joint, it could be just his way. He's got a lot of velocity, but there's a lot of force going right now in that direction that's kind of spinning him out. Now, if we also take a look, look at how his right foot's planted down. So that's what he uses. So his left side's clearing out, right foot's down, and he uses that as kind of his post to kind of hit off the right side in order to get the club face squared up. Because you can see here, that club face, whoops, that club face is wide open. Actually, not. I'm sorry, not wide open, but closed. It's wide open on the way back. Let's take a look at that point. So that face has to go be rotated. That shaft has to rotate from open, square, and then closed. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But the more shaft rotation you have for the average golfer, that means the ball is going to go more right and left. You'd have to hit a lot of golf balls to time that up. So that's the reason why I'd like to see that kind of a reduction of shaft rotation, letting that right wrist kind of keep that club face squared to its path a little bit longer. Now, so we see that type of movement. Now what we see through impact is there's still some movement there, but it's considerably less. And notice how now that right heel is up in the air. You can kind of see that movement looking at basically, I'll get that out of the way. Look at that marker and how the right part of the Nike shoe is coming up. So his right side is much more aggressive through the ball and left side is more stable. And that's really what we want is as those arms are swinging down, we're posting up on that left leg, that right side can go through. And then now I just see a little bit better all the way through the ball. Tight. And then his finish has also changed a little bit too. Looks a little bit softer, not so much around. So, but camera angles obviously can throw things off. So to me, I just see his right side going through it. To me, looks a little bit more up vertically with his upper body. So I love these changes that he's made. And obviously, they've worked well for him. Hey, golfers. Tony with Reactionary Golf. Got some exciting news for you. June 2nd and 3rd, Brendan and I will be hosting our Be Better Golf School powered by Reactionary Golf at the famous... Golden Horseshoe Golf Club, obviously one of America's top 100 golf courses in Williamsburg, Virginia. Great thing about this facility is we had hosted this last year. 
We had our own private tea area and private short game area just for the school. So it's a great place. Come and join us. Head over to BeBetterGolf.net or ReactionaryGolf.com and you can get more information. We'll hope to see you there.